Good morning, River Chase, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are actually videoing this morning on Saturday um, and not on Sunday in order to try to uh, follow the ordinances that the governor has just put in place about staying at home. We will not be meeting physically at River Chase Community Church for the next two Sundays on Easter or the 19th, but Pastor Tony will video himself next Sunday and then I will video myself on the 19th. So still stay connected and um, follow up with us because we will still be with you and doing services. Um, this morning, we definitely wanted to pray. And um, we wanted to pray for my nephew, Jack, who um, is having a high fever and not feeling well. We're really um, sadly hoping that it's just strep, but we're gonna pray for him. We did wanna say a few praises. Maggie Ingram is feeling much better. Uh, Linda Scollard can hear, praise the Lord. And Steve, we still want to pray for him and continue for his healing, but he's doing so well. So will you pray with me this morning? Lord God, we just thank you so much um, for just the opportunity to come to you at any opportunity, at any time, and to uh, know without a shadow of a doubt that you hear our prayers and that you are with us praying alongside us, Lord. I do pray that you would be with Jack, that you would heal him, that it would not be the, uh, the virus, but that it would be something that our medicine knows how to um, alleviate well. I pray, God, that you would be with anyone who is sick, Lord, anyone who is struggling with this virus, anyone who is um, working on the front lines to fight this virus, Lord, that you would give them wisdom on how to help and what to do, Lord. Um, and I pray, God, that you would uh, just continue to be with everyone in our church, Lord. I just praise you for um, being with all those who have been sick, and I thank you for the ways that you have already been starting to heal them, like Maggie, Lord. I thank you so much that Linda can hear, Lord. What a blessing it is um, to have technology that can help us um, alleviate and fix things that kind of get messed up every so often, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that um, you would continue to be with Steve, God, but I just praise you so much that he is doing so well at this time. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for your goodness, for your kindness, that you are with us, and that this morning, as it is um, us uh, celebrating Palm Sunday, that, Lord, we get to celebrate that you entered Jerusalem. Lord, you prepared your heart and you walked into the city that you knew was going to reject you lord and you did it for your people lord and so we thank you for um your humble uh love and for the way that you have brought us salvation god we praise you and we thank you amen as it is palm sunday we are um so excited to um proclaim hosanna Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And this morning, um, my husband, Michael, is actually going to be also preaching on Palm Sunday. And so he wrote a poem, and he told me that I could read it for you this morning because I thought that it was well written and a, and a helpful way to reflect on what it is that Palm Sunday and Easter is all about. So will you please listen? Hosanna, Jesus, Hosanna. Hosanna to our God most high, to our Elion, Lord Sabaoth, to Yahweh, holy Adonai. Hosanna to the coming King, most royal son of Jesse's son. Blessed is he who comes to see righteous salvation's labor done. Hosanna, cry and welcome. Behold him mounted on the foal, who rides in humble power's peace and conquest for each sinner's soul. Hosanna, sing, not just in praise. Your fickle heart knows not its need. Hosanna means deliver me. It means the perfect God must bleed. So hold back your Hosanna if you'd hoped for gain without the cost. Take up your cloaks, lay rest your leaves, unless you truly know you're lost, and would in desperation beg that our Creator come and die. If you would see his kingdom come, you also must plead, crucify. 
then in his death taste death in you, but from the grave arise made new. Thank you so much. Pastor Tony is going to join us this morning for our offering. Good morning, River Chase. So glad we could share with you. Today I wanted to share in our service an offering. Part of worship is for us to have the opportunity to give what God has blessed with us. And uh, we are blessed beyond measure. This is a difficult time. And I know that some have been laid off. Some are without jobs. Uh, some have less income. I just want you to know that our board has made a, uh, a very gracious and loving decision. They want to continue to pay all of our staff, to pay all of our employees during this, this uh, coronavirus shutdown. And uh, we're continuing to pay the bills at the church. And, and uh, thank you, Roxanne, uh, for working so hard to help us to do that. Uh, Maxie is working on the care stimulus package so that we might get some help uh, from the government. But we just want you to know we're, we're so blessed. And we have an opportunity to give back to God what he's given to us. And an offering helps us to do that. An offering that we give to God to bless his name. And so if you'd like to give, please send a check to our church, River Chase Community Church at 2053 Old Montgomery Highway, Birmingham, Alabama, 35244. Or you'll see a note at the end of this video of how you can send through Venmo. And that's also on our website. But I hope that you'll just consider what you might do to continue the ministry of our church. And so I want us to pray this morning. Father, thank you for this offering. Thank you for the blessing that you give to us every day. Thank you that we have a privilege uh, to serve and to worship you. We may be apart, Lord, but we're united in Christ. We're united in what you've called us to do. And so bless your name, Lord. Bless these gifts. Bless the givers who've been so faithful to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. morning our message comes from uh, the end of Esther 4 and the beginning of Esther 5 so I'm going to read the first portion and then Cheryl is going to read the last starting at chapter 4 verse 15 then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and do not eat or drink for three days night or day I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther ordered him. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the king's palace in front of the king's quarters, while the king was sitting in his royal throne inside the throne room opposite the entrance in the palace. And when the king saw Esther, Queen Esther, standing in the court, she won favor in his sight, and he held out to Esther the golden scepter that is in his hand. Then Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. And the king said to her, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you, even to the half of my kingdom. And Esther said, If it please the king, let the king and Haman come today to a feast that I have prepared for the king. Then the king said, Bring Haman quickly, so that we may do as Esther has asked. So the king and Haman came to the feast that Esther had prepared. As they were drinking wine after the feast, the king said to Esther, What is your wish? It shall be granted to you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom it shall be fulfilled. Then Esther answered, My wish and my request is, if I had found favor in the sight of the king, and if it pleased the king to grant my wish and fulfill my request, let the king and Haman come to the feast that I prepare for them, and tomorrow I will do as the king has said. Father, thank you for the word that we're going to be sharing. Thank you for the opportunity we have to, 
to worship your name and to praise you. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Father, we lift your name on high, and I count it a privilege to be able to stand this morning and share your word and to offer words of encouragement, of challenge, of hope, because we know that Jesus Christ is Lord. In his name we pray, amen. If you ever watched uh, track and field sports events on TV or ever seen the Olympics, you probably noticed there's two kinds of high jumps or high jumpers. And those whose feet and legs and arms are catapulted themselves backward into the air over uh, a high jump. Um, and the men's Olympic record is by uh, Javier Stoudemire of Cuba, eight feet and a quarter inches. July of 1993. It's one of the longest standing records in this sport. And then there's another kind of high jumper called a pole vaulter. You run down the track with a pole in hand and uh, plant it in a hole and use that pole to send yourself to the moon. The Olympic record for that for men is 19 feet, nine and a quarter inches by Thiago Braz de Silvia in 2016. The real reality is this. Every one of us have hurdles to cross in life. Every one of us have hills to climb, mountains to soar. We have challenges that are difficult, roadblocks and barriers, and uh, just impossible to climb. The question is, how am I gonna face this obstacle? How am I gonna climb this mountain? How am I gonna to get over it? And sometimes those high bars are within reach, and then we look forward to that challenge. And, and uh, we love to, to try and to, uh, to lift ourselves over that. But there's other times that the challenge is absolutely impossible. There's no way for us to cross over. There's no way for us to accomplish a particular task. And Esther learned that obstacles, if we want them to or not, to come or not, sometimes they're not respecter of persons. They do not care who they confront. They will come if we want them to or not. And once we have climbed over one hurdle, the next hurdle is not far away. Esther had a mountain to climb in her story that we just read. She's living during the reign of King Xerxes. The, and as you know, the Jewish people were scattered around the Persian Empire. And she was part of the nation of Israel. The Israelites basically had no authority. They had no governing positions. They were not the rulers. They were part of a vast multitude that was living in exile in Babylon uh, in 587 BC under King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, and then in 539 uh, BC, Cyrus the Great, the ruler of the Medo-Persians who conquered Babylon and, and he scattered all the remaining Jews. So she's a woman who has been dealing with war, has been living with exile, her nation of people has been scattered, and she is a peasant girl trying to survive. Who would ever guess that this young Jewish woman named Esther, an orphan, would end up being the queen of the greatest empire the world has ever known? What a great wall that she had to climb. A great mountain of relationships, a personal loss and gain, poverty and discord, a woman living in a land dominated by an, another nation of people. Amazingly, Esther climbs this formidable mountain. And she does raise to new heights. She, she becomes queen. She's raised from that status of being an orphan now to one of the greatest women in all the land. And yet, even though she was trusting God, even though she had faith, even though she's doing what God purposed for her to do, we soon find out that she has a hurdle that seems almost unsurmountable. Mordecai, who's her cousin and caretaker, is in a battle for his life. And, and now what was she going to do? He refused to bow to Haman. He refused to obey the king's orders. His life was in danger. 
And Haman found out what the what when, when Haman found out what nation Mordecai was come, that made it even worse because he hated Israel. And so Mordecai, searching for an answer, sees his cousin, Queen Esther, as God's remedy to help him and to help the nation of Israel. He goes to Esther and he tells her, you've got to be the leader to get us out of all this trouble. You talk about a hurdle. That was a mountain to cross. Many of us have hurdles to, to, to face and we find them sometimes higher and harder. Some of them block us from doing what we know God wants us to do. And sometimes, like this coronavirus, comes to us as a great surprise because there was nothing that we have done to cause it. There's nothing that we have done to warrant it. And yet it has come and been a great um, turmoil to our land. Sometimes life is just extremely difficult. So Esther, growing up in this circumstance, in these conditions, is faced now with this great hurdle to, to cross. Listen, I want to tell you that God will intercede in your life and will give you great opportunity when you open up your heart to him. Our lives are not a life of luck and coincidence and chance. I'm amazed at how many people think that. Uh, they do not see that God intercedes in behalf of everything that we do. Sometimes society seems to be fixated on luck. Either you're blessed with good fortune and karma and luck or bad luck, coincidence and chance. People will, will carry rabbit's foot in their pocket for luck, not so lucky for the rabbit. People wear beads and chains and jewelry for luck. In Korea, it's considered bad luck to wash your hair on New Year's Day because washing your hair washes away all the good luck. In China, uh, they eat fish that's thought to bring wealth and good fortune. And the head of the fish is point toward the elders, and that's the first person that must eat. The Philippines uh, believe eating round circular fruit like apples, Asian pears, and peaches brings about abundance and wealth. They even think that wearing uh, anything that's round, wearing polka dotted clothing or throwing up coins in the air on New Year's brings luck. On and on, we find symbols of luck. Rabbit's foot, four-leaf clovers, wishbone shooting star, wishing wells and fountains, seeing a barn star, a star, a star on a barn will keep the devil away. Bad luck we see is black cats and number 13 and opening umbrellas indoors or going underneath the ladder. The book of Esther dismisses this concept of luck altogether. And it emphasizes the sovereign hand of God in all that we do. Sovereignty is not luck. It's a reality of God who watches over us and who sees us and provides for us, who, who has a plan for every one of us and is involved in our daily lives. God is always walking and working behind the scenes in many ways that we will never know. You know, if something good happens to me, I refuse to call it luck. I immediately say, it's a blessing because I know that every good gift comes from God. James 1, 17 says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In Romans 8, 28 to 30, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined, and predestined them to what? To be conformed to the image of God, in order that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he also uh, called, he justified, and those whom he justified, he glorified. Proverbs 16, 9, the heart of man's plan is his, his way, and the Lord establishes his steps. God is always working behind the scenes. He's always intertwined in our comings and our goings. He knows when we sit down and when we lie down and when we get up and when we get going. He, he knows the struggles we go through. He knows our hurting, and he, 
and, and desperate, when we're desperate and confused. He knows when life has us all in knots and all bound up and our paths are blocked and the road's not easy. He knows the hurdles that we have to cross. I imagine that Esther was greatly disturbed, greatly troubled. She's trying to cross over this hurdle. And then her cousin comes to her and tells her that his life is in jeopardy. It was going to be for her a great risk. The risk of even facing that of losing her, her position as queen. The risk possibly of even losing her life. She remembered what happened to Queen Vashti, who was dismissed. And we know the law that said if you approach the king without him asking, you could lose your life. So she didn't know. She didn't know what might happen. She didn't know if the king would strip her of her position, her royal place. Didn't know if she would be thrown in jail. Didn't know if she'd be killed. It was a great hurdle. So how did she get to the place of being to, able to step out on faith? How did she get to the place of being able to say in chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, that she would go, and if I perish, I perish? Look a little deeper into that word, and we'll uncover the hidden power of God, because in chapter 4, verse 16, Esther sent that reply to Mordecai. He said, go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa. Now, don't just go get a handful. Don't just go get a couple of dozen. Don't just go get a few hundred. Go gather all the Jews, wherever they are. Go get them all. And I want you to pray and fast for me. Pray that God's going to intercede. Pray that God's going to have mercy and grace. Pray that my husband, the king, will look on me with favor. Pray that somehow the nation of Israel will be saved. Pray that I'll have strength to make it another day. Pray that our people will be blessed and taken out of poverty. Pray and fast. I'm telling you, before I go to the king, before I ask him anything, pray and fast. And I want you to know that me and my maids are going to do the same thing. As a nation of people, she says you need to pray and fast. You know, that's the same word that God's telling us right now, that we need to pray and and fast because God's calling us to a time such as this. Wow. Remarkably, Esther calls the nation to pray. The whole assembly, everyone to help her to climb this great wall, everyone to cross over this high jump, everyone to face this struggle, everyone to come to that road that's blocked and find a way to humble ourselves before God and fast and pray. Our church for the last several weeks has been called to this very, very task, 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I'm telling you right now, as many of you already know, God answers prayer when we get serious about asking. Are you taking time to fast and pray? For the three days straight, without eating, without drinking, without doing anything, they fasted and prayed. If you fast and pray with sincerity, with the body of Christ, with faith believing, then no matter what we're going to face, we'll be able to cross that barrier with Christ. Esther's defining moment was then a step of faith. She had to take a risk. She had to step out. There's a great principle here that I, I want us to, to understand. Because when we're anxious, when we're surrounded with fear, when we have this great hurdle to cross, stop and pray, fast, wait three days, and then take a step of faith. Esther, queen of Persia, goes into the inner court of the palace. Her knees buckling, her heart pounding, not knowing what's going to happen. And God does something remarkable. When the king saw her standing there, it pleased him. It pleased him, and his heart was turned towards her, and he held out his scepter toward her. What a great miracle that happened. A great privilege for her to speak that could have been a great tragedy. 
The king not only invited her in, but as we read a moment ago, what is it, Queen Esther? What's your request? And he said, I'll give you even up to half my kingdom. Wow. One moment could have been a disaster, and now he's offering up half of his kingdom. Three days is a transformative time. In God's word, there's numerous examples of this great principle. When Abraham was commanded to sacrifice Isaac by faith, Abraham, willing, after three days later, a substitute was, was provided. You remember the story in Genesis 22. God was testing Abraham. Abraham, here I am. Now take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Go to the region of Moriah and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. And, and on one of the mountains I'll tell you about. Here is this mountain to climb again, this great hurdle. And he does that. Nonetheless, Abraham was going to do what God said. The next morning he got up, he saddled the donkey, he took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. He cut enough wood for the burnt offering and he set the place that God told him about. And then if you look at Genesis 22, 4, it says, On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. And God provided then a miracle in that event. How many days was Jonah in the belly of the fish? Jonah 1.17 says, But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. There's a scripture I want you to write down, and you may want to make a note card because I think it's inspiring and encouraging. It's Hosea 6.2. Uh, and it says this, after two days, he'll revive us. And on the third day, he will restore us. Listen, church, there's power in prayer and fasting. The three-day principle is life-changing. How do we know that? We know that because Jesus Christ died on a Friday. And he rose from the dead on the third day. On the third day, there was a miracle. On the third day, there was life change. On the third day, there was new life. third day, there was power of hell was defeated. On the third day, the stone, the barrier was rolled away. On the third day, all the hardships of the cross were taken away. The torture was turned into peace. The lasting pain turned to joy. The death turned into life. Jesus arose on the third day. Yes, God was about to do something remarkable in the life of Esther after the third day. Esther gained a hearing. She gained respect. She gained stature. Her life was not the same. She gave up her hidden life to approach the king, to save her people. Esther was empowered by God through prayer. I want to ask you, will you right now begin your three-day journey? Will you claim the power of God by the cross, by the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? If you have not, will you consider to fast and pray with us until Easter? God is with us to help us face every obstacle, to cross every barrier, to, to climb every mountain. We have to take the first step, and that's to pray and to fast. And then we've got to step in faith. Ask God to intervene in your life. Ask God to change your life. Ask God to give you hope, promise for a future that, that even if it looks bleak, we know that God is with us. Ask God to bless you so that you might be a blessing to someone else. Father, thank you for this encouraging word. Thank you for this challenge right now to be people who pray and fast and then take a step of faith. Help us to look to you for every event that comes our way to cross the high jump or to cross the pole vault. Whatever hurdle it might be, whatever size it might be, help us to look to you and to trust you and to know that we have, when we have faithfully walked with you, you're going to see us through. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Palm Sunday is just such a beautiful um, time.
time of just reiterating the importance of the 21 days of prayer and fasting and of Lent, that we have been preparing our hearts to remember and to look forward to what it is that Jesus Christ has done. And this coming up Sunday is Easter. That is the day that we proclaim the truth that we know that Jesus Christ has died and that he rose again. And now he has the keys to death, that death cannot overtake him, cannot overtake his people, and that we are all given salvation through Jesus Christ. And praise the Lord for that. Um, this morning, we did have a few announcements for you to remember. Roxanne has actually um, kind of gathered a Bible reading plan for Holy Week. We are about to start Holy Week starting Monday because it's the week leading up to Easter. And normally we have um, weekly gatherings with the uh, surrounding churches. So we meet with the Baptists and the Methodists and the Lutheran churches with us. But this week, since we can't, uh, we do have the, the Holy Week uh, readings from Roxanne that Pastor Tony will be email, emailing out. And then we are also going to be emailing you the, uh, the sermons from each of the pastors that was going to preach with us being gathered, but now you can watch it from your home. Um, please continue on the 21 days of prayer and fasting. We are so close to Easter. It is so soon. Um, continue to check email and Facebook for ways to stay connected. Uh, we will be sending out uh, different devotionals this week. This week, Cheryl and I, I'm sorry, Cheryl and I will not be doing a video devotional since you'll be getting the Holy Week uh, sermons, but we will still be sending you uh, written out devotionals. And then next Monday, the 13th at 630 uh, is our women's event. For every woman, uh, since we can't actually gather to do anything, we will be getting together for a Zoom meeting with Katie Hunter. Um, all of us know Katie, we love her, and she is actually selling Mary Kay now, and this, uh, two days ago, she actually just did a beautiful, fun, um, kind of Zoom, well, it was actually Facebook Live for her, but we did a facial, and it was all at our own place, but she brought us the supplies that we needed, and we could all do it from our own home, but this time, we're going to do it through a Zoom conference so we can all interact and talk while we're doing it. And it should be a really good time to just get together and talk to each other because we miss you guys a lot. Um, so we love you, River Chase. Um, Cheryl's about to come and close us out in prayer. Church, we love you. We miss you. Um, I'm so grateful that we have technology that still allows us to um, be together in this way. So thank you for joining us. Um, I hope that we get to see you soon. Would you pray with me, please? God, it is a privilege to be your children. It is a privilege that we can approach you and ask for what we need. God, thank you for your holiness, for who you are. Please continue to strengthen us, strengthen our faith, and uh, allow us to continue growing um, throughout this this weird time that we're going through. Thank you for whatever it is that you have planned for us. Um, Jesus, we uh, are so honored to celebrate again this time of year. Easter is the answer, God, that you, were, you overcame death, that you took care of us in such a loving, fatherly way. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. Amen. It's been um, a privilege today to get together with you, and we'll see you again soon. Bye, River Chase.